Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at which piece of 3D software should you be learning. So I'm going to do a comparison of software, I'm going to talk about the industry as a whole and then at the end I will make a decision on which I think you should be learning. So Maya is the most commonly used in industry at the moment and most studios are using that piece of software and that's something that's really important to think about when you're considering which piece of software you should learn. Now I'm going to compare this to Blender, obviously Blender's my choice in terms of what I use, uh, but because it's free it offers something else to those people who are picking up 3D software. Now Autodesk uh, Online, they recently released an article and you may have seen tweets about it comparing Maya to Blender and it was very interesting. And this was written by Autodesk and they pretty much said that the programs were equal uh, but they didn't seem to be looking at the recent features inside Blender 2.8. And I would say, in my opinion, of course, that Blender's starting to overtake Maya. Uh, there are aspects, especially within animation, as people mainly say, uh, that Blender's lagging behind. But in terms of the future, I would say Blender's really taking an edge here. So, uh, Generally speaking though, software wise, you're not seeing a lot of difference between each program. So you could argue, why on earth would you choose the one that costs what over a thousand pound a year as opposed to one that's completely free? Well, there are reasons. Now Flip Normals did a really good article recently about why Blender isn't industry standard and probably won't be for the foreseeable future, certainly in the near future anyway. If you haven't checked them out, go onto their YouTube channel, it's fantastic work. And they look at um, Blender from a industry perspective, so lots of their workflows are industry based. So really, really worth checking out their YouTube channel and their website as well. I'll put links in the description. Uh, so their main issue with Blender is the pipelines. They're not their issue as such, but they're pointing out the industry's main issue is the pipelines. So in terms of the industry pipeline, uh, you've got sculpting in ZBrush that, or ZBrush uh, is the most common, uh, retopo of the UVs in either Maya or Modo, uh, then texturing in Maori Painter, uh, rigging and animation again in Maya, uh, effects and simulations are done in Houdini usually and rendering uh, would probably be in Maya, use, Maya using Arnold or uh, Houdini, Katana, uh, lots of different options there but generally not cycles. Uh, so uh, the industry pipeline looks like that and Blender doesn't really feature in that. Blender is great because it can do all those things and it's really catching up with people like uh, ZBrush, ZBrush in my, <laughs> in my head anyway, and uh, the UV unwrapping, uh, things like that, are still lacking behind a bit. Uh, the texturing, I would say, um, Substance Painter uh, and um, Maori and people like that, uh, they still got the edge on us, uh, I say us, Blender. Uh, so uh, there's, there's still room for improvement, there's still work to be done by Blender. Flip Normals also pointed out that, that pipeline is kind of ingrained and stuck in the industry. So if you think these people have been learning this for years and years and using these pieces of software for years and years, they're not going to want to change, they know that, and moving on to a different system is kind of pointless to them because it's not going to bring any real improvements. It may be cheap, but it's not bringing any improvements. So these big industries have got lots of money, they're not going to worry about a few grand a year on software. Uh, they're more worried about outcomes, and retraining would cost them more than moving across to the software. So it's not going to happen for really big industries. However, we have started to see Blender starting to make real inroads into the industry and make an impact, a very strong impact. We've had Next Gen the film, and that was uh, fantastic, it's on Netflix, and it was made in Blender. Visual Effects Geek, if you check out their YouTube channel, I'll put the links in the description, uh, they point out that it's been used in lots of different films, and you can uh, see uh, more about that with that link, but uh, The Walking Dead, The Man in the High Castle, and you can actually see an interview with uh, Barnstorm, the visual effects company that did The Man in the High Castle and how uh, they eventually moved across to Blender. So it is happening. Uh, and you can see that interview with Blender Guru. It's on his channel and I'll put a link in the description. Uh, other films like Hardcore Henry and there's a big list there. So do check those out if you're interested. So we can start to see that it is making an impact. 
and that raises real questions about the future and is going to impact you if you're thinking which one should I be learning. Now Blender is really fast moving forward. In terms of innovation, they're doing extremely well. I've never seen a piece of software develop so fast. They're bringing out daily builds, daily <laughs> and uh, we'll start we're going to see blender 2.81 fairly soon where there's going to be sculpting improvements and you just have to look at blender today uh, and you can see all the developments they're making uh, it is absolutely incredible also look at the recent blender convention and you can see all the things going on there it is absolutely incredible and amazing it definitely is one of the fastest growing pieces of software undoubtedly on top of that, there's a massive community who are creating these add-ons and developing the software outside as well. So not only have you got this great development team, but you've also got a large community supporting it as well. Not only that, that they can actually take a few risks because it's open source, they can push it in certain directions, see what happens. The community will respond because they're doing daily builds and say whether it's working for them or not. And it's really a team aspect, team spirit going on. And that I think we'll see a lot more of in the future. And that's what will push Blender forwards. Will it take over Maya and other industry standards software? We shall see. So in terms of industry use, I think it's undoubtedly going to be the case that small indie studios will start to take on Blender. It's a kind of no brainer in a sense. You've got this piece of software that's doing everything, maybe slightly more than these bigger pieces of software and it costs nothing. So uh, it's, it's obvious that those studios are going to want to go across to that uh, because of the costs and because of the capabilities and actually because of the support from the community. So generally speaking, I would say in terms of indie studios, small studios, that will be taken up and that will slowly filter through, I think, but it will be slow. So that brings us on to which piece of software should you be learning? Now, if we look at time spans, a university course in the UK takes three years and that will put you at a level where you can go into the industry as a junior 3D artist. So you're still at the bottom rung of uh, the industry. So that's three years to get to the bottom rung. So in terms of those three years, you have to be thinking which piece of software is going to grow the fastest and be the industry standard. Well, I think within three years, we won't see much movement in the industry because it will take a long time, as I pointed out earlier. But in terms of software development, I think Blender will improve the quickest. It's certainly showing that at the moment. And we've seen recent sponsorships to the, the development fund by huge companies like AMD and Nvidia and games companies and so on. There's lots going on with Blender and it's making a huge stir. So in three years time, what are we going to see? That's quite interesting. I think Blender will catch up in some ways in terms of its use within the industry, but I think that may take a bit longer than three years. In the big industries, I think it's going to take a bit longer due to that training issue, as I mentioned earlier. So if you want to work for one of these big studios, big AAA games companies or Disney or whatever it might be, then yes, you need to be learning Maya and you need to be working very hard. I work in a sixth form centre, so that's just before degree level. And many of my students have gone on to university and most of them have had to switch to something like Maya. I have had one student who used Blender and went straight from our course into the industry and he went in as an apprentice and he made quite an impact in that company using Blender and they were all quite interested in the program. And I believe he is actually using Blender in places with the work that he's doing. And the company are really interested in what he's doing in this free program. So these big companies aren't actually worried about the software people are using, they're more worried about whether it's going to fit into the pipeline. And when Blender starts working on that aspect, then we might see changes. I have been offered work with companies and they weren't worried at all about the fact that I was using Blender. They were more worried about the results that I was going to achieve. And it's fairly easy to export models and so forth from Blender into other programs. But if you're in a big company, then that pipeline syncing and integrating is certainly going to be an issue for some people. Now there's a lot of the industry that won't worry too much about pipeline at all and they'll just want you to produce the results. I was looking at a job recently and they were saying to me that they'd just set me up with the kit that I needed and the kit that I used. So they weren't too worried about what software was there. 
as long as it was integrated into their systems fine, which it would be if I was exporting as an OBJ or FBX or whatever it might be. And if you're wanting to do freelance work, I think Blender is kind of a no brainer for that if you're just starting out. But freelance work is very hard to come by and you're hitting a big number of people out there with a great number of skills and it's quite hard to get the work. If you are looking at job listings, you'll see that Blender does not come up very often and it's actually really niche in that sense. So if you are looking and you're a Blender artist, then look on places that are Blender forums and like Blender artists, for example. Uh, but you won't find many of that in the actual industry. They'll usually be asking for skills in things like Maya, Max and so on. So to sum everything up, which one should you choose? It's still very difficult to say. If you're going for a huge big company and that's your dream aspirations and you're really committed because you have to be super committed because you are in a very competitive field, then you will want to be using Maya at the moment. If you're wanting to get into the industry, I would choose Blender. Now you might think, well, he's obviously going to say that because he's a Blender artist and he's using Blender all the time. but in a way, that's a testament to the fact that Blender can work in the industry. I'm working for companies using Blender. And you do have to think about the future as well in terms of development of this software. Blender is doing exceptionally well and it's leading the way in terms of development. So I think that about sums it up. Do have a look at the links in the description and do your own research, but hopefully this will give you some guidance as to what I think, and this is my own opinion of course, and combined with the research, but it is a lot of my own opinion and how I see things going, but hopefully this has given you a bit of a guide. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.